Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in previous videos we have been looking at the calculate function so being able to use or logic even and logic but what I want to do in this video uh, is to show you how we can obviously use a calculate function doing some filtering but when that filtering needs to apply to a different table to which our sum column is in and that makes may sound more confusing than it needs to be uh, but nonetheless I'm sure you'll get the drift as soon as we move into this so what we've got here is our previous measures that we've done so what I'm going to do is well they're not the measures they're the results of course so let's just go into call out value uh, and maybe make these sort of near enough half the size just so I can simply reduce these down in terms of the boxes. Uh, we probably don't need to keep hold of these anymore, uh, but nonetheless, we will do for the time being. Let's move that to there. Now, what we're going to do is create, actually, before we do the measure, we can like represent this visually. So we've got our table here at the moment, but let's just condense this down uh, because nowhere on the page are we currently summarizing using a different table. So if we go in, again, we'll just do a, a very basic table and what I want this time is to get uh, tasks so that I can use the revenue column. So I can just drag that in there. And if we remove all our filters, we can see our total revenue of 29,900, which of course, if I scroll over on our table, so we can't see there at the moment because I just remembered in a previous video, we filtered in only uh, those with a quantity of one. So if we remove that filter, yeah, we can now see our totals are matched. What I'm going to do, so our revenue column, as we know, is coming from our tasks table. I'm just going to go into our customers table and select customer name and drag that into our columns here. So we can now see the breakdown of our overall to total, uh, well, total revenue uh, by each of the customer names. And what I want to do is create a measure that only gives us the total for one of these particular customers. So what we'll do is we'll go straight into our measures and just jump in with creating that measure. Now, of course, you don't need to create a measure for this. You could simply just apply the required filter to the required visual. However, it just demonstrates a, uh, or gives us a demonstration for doing this measure. So the first thing we'll do is of course, name our measure. So for us, we'll call this, uh, and I was just trying to pick one of those customers with a short name. Uh, let's call it uh, total revenue. Um, and we'll go that middle one, Nebula, like so. And so we're gonna first start off by doing our calculate function. We'll also do our sum of revenue. So we can see we've got our revenue field there in our task table. And I think I mentioned it before, but of course, if you're working with uh, a large number of tables and maybe a revenue field appears in multiple tables, just make sure that of course, you've got the right table selected here. Now, when it comes to the filter, all we need to do is type into here customer, and you can see all of our matching or search terms. For us, we're now using the customer table, so we can go to customer name, and then of course add into this, uh, what is it, Nebula Dynamics, quotations, close brackets, and we can see that the measure has now been committed. What I'll do is take a copy of one of these, uh, if I can actually do copy and paste, drag that up there, replace with our new measure, and you can see we've now got our desired result. So Nebula Dynamics 9782 is matching our 9782 down here. So we can see it works exactly the same. However, if we now wanted to go back into this measure and use uh, an or statement or even an and statement, and do, so let's go for and space, if we wanted to do something from the customer table, then we're completely fine because obviously it's picked this up. However, because we've already got a field from our customer table and you try and type for the task table, you'll see it's not found it. And that's because it wants your uh, logic to all be within the same table. So how could we do this and filter across two tables? Well, all we need to do is use our more extensive filter function. So by that, what we can do is let's just delete everything we put here uh, for our current filter uh, criteria. And instead of just typing the field, what we're gonna do is use the function filter. And now you can see we've got some additional information. So at first wants us to provide the table name and obviously the filter to apply to that table. So in here we can type customer, do a space, 
and now provide the field from the customer table we want to filter. So for us, it'll be customer name equals Nebula Dynamics. So that's our filter done there. Now what we can do is obviously after closing brackets on that filter function is do another comma and we can step into a separate filter function. So in here, what we're gonna now do is go filter again, but this time I'm gonna filter on the tasks table, comma, and this time I want it to be, let's do priority high. I want to look for tasks uh, priority equals to high, close brackets for filter. And so you can see with this closed brackets, it's also highlighted the, the first open brackets of this filter function here. So we know we need to do another closed brackets so that it matches our calculate function that start here. So we know we've got enough closed brackets. Hit enter. Now what we should see is not only the 9782 here, but this should now be reduced to only give it the matching ones that are high. And the way we can of course test this is to simply come out of the selections. We'll go into customer name, Nebula Dynamics. We'll go into priority of high. And then as we scroll across to our revenue, we can now see we've got the matching 1292 of total revenue in our table, which matches our measure. And of course, if we remove the filters from here, obviously that number at the top here will remain the same. So one final tip just to help us tidy that measure up. If we go back into here, now obviously the logic we've got here is fairly straightforward and does fit onto our well, one line of our uh, formula bar. However, let's just tidy this up, um, which I often do, and you could call it good practice, and let's just space this across different lines. So as you probably know by now, if you hit enter, it will just commit the formula and obviously close the formula bar. However, if you hold down the Alt key, and then hit enter, you can see that we've now gone to a new line. So what I like to do, and again, sometimes you can call it best practice, is now separate each of the separate elements onto their own row, just because it's then a bit easier to read. So what I would personally do is then bring some onto a new line. After the comma, I bring my first filter criteria onto a line of its own, is Nebula Dynamics, and then do another filter onto a separate line again. And now this last uh, close brackets, I bring that onto a line of its own, bring it back to the beginning so you can see the line then ties it back to our calculate function. And then I'm now gonna highlight all of that, hit the tab button once, and you can now see it's ever so slightly more tidy. And again, you could put the, you could separate each of your filter ones onto new rows if you prefer and think that looks more tidier. But nonetheless, I just think it's a bit easier to read rather than being on one line. You can clearly see what's been uh, summed and then you can then see, of course, your two clear filter expressions. So hopefully you enjoyed that video uh, and it made sense and it was a logical progression from the uh, calculate formulas we've been looking at in our previous videos. If you did like this video and you want to see more of the content in this Power BI course playlist, you can find the link to that playlist in the description of this video. And you'll also find links to the source files we're using in these videos if you'd like to have a, a try and follow along at home. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.